Anka Dimitrievich, and I will moderate today's webinar. Uh, as always, at the start of our webinars, I have to say that uh, we disseminate outcomes of feasibility studies and academic consultancies undertaken by uh, seven Scottish universities in collaboration with small to medium-sized enterprises in Scotland. The focus of, of these studies is sustainable building design and refurbishment. And the project Kickstart Online is funded by European Regional Development Fund and Scottish Government. This is a live event, so it can happen that there is a fire alarm. If that happens, we will have to stop and we will continue later. If you can join us, that will be fine, but if you cannot, then uh, you will be able to watch a video recording of this webinar in due course. Online viewers can start using chat facility at any time and the questions that you ask will be answered after the presentation. The event will close around 2 o'clock. If some questions cannot be answered at that time, uh, they will be answered by email by our speakers. Today's webinar is about a retrofit of solar photovoltaics on existing housing. This was a study that was undertaken by Edinburgh Napier University in collaboration with three housing associations in Scotland. Our speakers today are Julio Bross Williamson of Scottish Energy Centre at Edinburgh Napier University and John Stinson also from the same Scottish Energy Centre at the same university. And we also have representatives of three housing associations uh, Mr. Michael Huey of Malcolm Holmes, uh, Mrs. N Wendy Farmer of Port of Lee's Housing Association, and Mr. John McMurrow of East Hall Park Housing Cooperative. I would kindly ask uh, our speakers now to start with their presentation. Thank you very much, Branka. Um, uh, welcome everyone to uh, this uh, webinar. Um, in which we have combined three feasibility studies dealing with uh, the, same, the same problem, the same uh, request um, in terms of the solar uh, PV um, feasibility um, into existing uh, housing stock. Um, this is a, a unique opportunity to, to bring uh, housing associations um, and, uh, and, and to also uh, provide them with this service of, um, of a feasibility study. I will first start with just an explanation of, of, the, of what uh, this webinar will, will include. Um, I will talk about the project partners and who we are, um, with, following with a, a brief introduction, um, the, the motivation of, of the feasibility studies and the brief um, talking slightly on uh, fuel poverty and how that has been uh, one of the, fuel, uh, the, the drivers for, for these projects, um, and also doing an overview on the methodology applied to all of the three um, feasibility studies. Um, and then we will follow on with uh, the, the three individual uh, housing associations and explaining um, briefly on some of the, the case studies uh, that we, we've selected followed with some conclusions. The project partners for, for this uh, combined webinar, um, bearing in mind that all of the studies will, were done individually, um, um, uh, have been um, the, the three uh, um, housing associations, uh, Malcolm Homes, uh, located uh, in, in Edinburgh, um, also East Hall Park um, in Glasgow, uh, Easter House area, uh, and Port of Leith, um, Edinburgh, um, in, in the Leith uh, areas of, of Edinburgh. Um, uh, we are, um, as part of Edinburgh Napier University, uh, a consultancy um, uh, office uh, uh, called the Scottish Energy Centre, uh, and we have provided this, this service um, to the housing associations. Um, two of the, of the, of the above-mentioned uh, housing associations are regarded as, as registered social uh, landlords, uh, with the exception of Malcolm Holmes, 
who who are are, are, um, are the private arm of the Needham Canmore Group, um, and the Needham Canmore Group are a, a housing association. Sorry, is regarded as a as a registered social landlord. Um, so, so there's just that sl a slight uh, difference there. As as an introduction, um, I think it's important to to highlight. Um, that uh, the feasibility studies uh, that we have here um, will be looking at both the technical and an economic uh, viability of, of, the, of, of the work and, and, and how we can bring um, renewables, uh, micro uh, generation um, into existing uh, households um, and, and looking at the constraints around it. Um, there's obviously that priority of looking at reducing electricity demand in, in the tenants and, and, and the occupiers of these houses, whether it's uh, in, the, in its um, household use or in communal areas. Um, so that was um, kind of part of, of the, the main focus in, in, the, in the reports. Um, a lot of the, the, the one of the, the, the kind of Priorities also was, was to look at reducing carbon footprinting in, in the, uh, of the homes, um, and and that was a core core um, element uh, within the some the results and and, and how uh, that would account into positive um, uh, reductions. Uh, the work carried out um, really looked at um, the, the viability and, and how well these buildings uh, could be could be adapted and and, uh, and this technology introduced uh, and, and installed into them. Um, this was um, um, a, a kind of planning stage and a, an introductory stage into assessing the, these buildings. We looked at uh, elements, for example, the, the roof viability and, and any site constraints around. Uh, the buildings. We also looked at um, sizing of, of the technology and the PVs themselves and how they would adapt properly to that uh, uh, roof in, in, in question. Um, and also uh, combined with that um, how the tilt of the original uh, roof uh, was going to be um, um, ideal or not and if not look at alternatives of, of, uh, of making that um, um, work and and and, uh, and produce more energy, and also looking, as I've mentioned before, the economic payback periods, um, and uh, with that in mind, the introduction of the feed-in tariffs, uh, this government incentive that's been uh, quite important uh, in the last year and a half, um, and that would really give us a yearly generation of of, of each roof of each potential uh, building, um, and looking at how. The energy savings, uh, the energy bill savings, uh, together with the feed-in tariffs, would would uh, justify uh, this investment. Uh, what the studies didn't look at um, was looking at specific design of the technology and the panels. Um, we really uh, applied a lot of the the, the available um, technology, um, current available technology. Um, so no further investigation on, on, on their quality and their efficiency was, was done. Um, looking at structural viability, that wasn't a part of the, of the report. Um, that would have to be taken a step further uh, uh, by the Housing Association. Also um, constraints and, and, uh, and paperwork requirements for connection um, and also with the with the energy providers, the current energy providers, uh, and and as well any installation guidance, uh, the guidelines specific to that uh, location of that building uh, were not uh, assessed. Um, the brief uh, I've mentioned this um, slightly at the beginning in the introduction um, is is looking at how the, the PVs, uh, the solar uh, photovoltaics, uh, would adapt appropriately. To the selected properties, um, a filtering was was performed in all three um, housing associations, uh, looking at their their wider housing stock and looking at properties that were ideally uh, fit into um, the, these feasibility studies, um, and also looking at how those solutions uh, would feed in uh, to any funding um, and the economic side of things, applying the feed-in tariffs. 
and making it viable economically as well for, for the housing associations. Objectives looking at um, the suitability of the dwellings, also looking at the constraints of the PV uh, in that location, whether there's shading, whether there's anything uh, that would conflict uh, on the roof. Um, looking at the best array, the PV array for that location and that size of roof, that square metre uh, and area of, of roof. Also looking at the technology um, and how that electrical output would, would feed back into the, the dwellings, whether it's in common areas or, or in the individual dwellings uh, and flats. Um, I've mentioned the electricity and the energy saving bills, um, how that would impact. Uh, and also looking at the, the paybacks, which is really important uh, in these type of, of feasibility studies. How we're going to, all that investment from that housing association, how it's going to be paid back and in what timeline. Um, one of the drivers uh, that um, at least two of the, of the housing associations really focused um, and, and applied uh, and, and really brought this, this feasibility study to light was uh, the fuel poverty. This was the case of Malcolm Holmes and East Hall Park. Um, 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 the, the, the Port of Leith uh, Housing Association um, were focusing more on uh, obtaining these uh, economic benefits through the feeding tariff and feeding them back into um, energy efficient uh, solutions in the future in a wider scope. Um, so, so, but at the end of the day, fuel poverty has been a key in, 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 the, in, in, this, um, in, in studies um, that we have today. As we know, fuel poverty is a big issue in Scotland um, and, and, and Britain as a whole. Um, it focuses on the standards, on energy efficiency, um, on, on the fabric and also on heating and uh, production of, of, uh, of electricity in, in households. So it's, it's really key that fuel poverty is reduced um, as much as possible. It's becoming a, an economic burden for a lot of people, a lot of families in Scotland. Um, so trying to reduce that burden and trying to reduce that struggle um, is key. Um, and by doing that uh, with lowering energy bills, um, that, can, that can be a, a good factor and, and something that can, that can reduce fuel poverty. As we know, fuel poverty um, is introduced the moment that a, a family uh, spends more than 10% of their household income um, into energy. So if that, bird, that uh, level has, has, is, is in, it's over 10%, uh, that is when families start getting, um, are falling into the fuel poverty and, and can be uh, affected. As I say, many Scottish families are, are suffering from this. It's the fuel prices that are going up as well. Um, the quality of housing is, is reduced. Uh, maintenance isn't there in a lot of the houses. So that, that equilibrium, um, is, is broken and, um, and fuel poverty kicks in. Um, for every 1% of, of, of price uh, in fuel, um, at least 40,000 uh, more households can fall into fuel poverty. That's been uh, part of the report by the Scottish Government uh, uh, showing that, those figures. Um, so as I say, solar PV uh, can produce um, a fraction um, of, uh, by lowering uh, fuel poverty, um, and that's why um, Partly, these uh, studies have been created. Um, uh, I'm moving on to the methodology. Uh, this methodology has been applied to all three uh, studies. So um, it's, it's important to highlight what elements we looked at uh, in a bit more detail uh, and what information we got from the housing associations in order for us to uh, create uh, solutions and create alternatives for the, for the solar PVs. The, the information that we required and, and, and really, um, the, sorry, the information that we um, included in our reports uh, looked at uh, basic elements of solar PV, for example, uh, how PVs work and the benefits and the actual technology out there and all the different uh, alternatives uh, that we can have. Uh, also, uh, a brief uh, kind of, uh, well, highlighting uh, any site constraints um, and how, for example, shading can impact 
um, a, a system and how it can reduce uh, the, the efficiency of, or, or even stop the, the production of, of, uh, of energy. So looking at elements like orientation, shading in, in a bit more detail, and maintenance regimes uh, is important. An explanation of how the feed-in tariff has been applied and what constraints are attached on it, uh, the different charges, uh, the changes that have happened in the last six months, um, and elements of where and when to export that energy. Uh, any grid connection constraints, there are different um, elements that um, have to be taken into consideration when sizing uh, the technology. Um, it's not just uh, a matter of filling the whole uh, roof area with solar panels. There are constraints out there that will um, give you different uh, tariffs, feed-in tariffs, and also give you different um, um, uh, problems with the grid connection. So, so that has been assessed as well. And, and in line with that, we've also asked for uh, information on the current energy use um, for those households, whether it's for communal areas, uh, how many kilowatt hours have been have been uh, paid and and and, uh, and needed for for the last year, um, or when it when when it's been individual households how much energy has been used, how much electricity has been used for that past year as well. So in order to, to obtain a lot of the information and, and, the, and the sizing um, of, these, uh, of this technology, uh, we've really focused our study on um, obtaining information and, and, and getting uh, as much information as we can on the buildings. And that includes uh, the location, uh, the tilt of the roof, um, in, in a bit more uh, detail with, with, uh, with plans and sections uh, across the, these buildings. Uh, that also uh, brings in or orientation, the best orientation, the best roof to, to take and, and, uh, and apply this, this technology. Shading, I've mentioned before, uh, the roof dimensions, which we've taken again from, from the, the, the plans that were provided, uh, the technology that's been out there, varying uh, in most cases um, polycrystalline or, 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 or monocrystalline technology um, and also looking at the inverter type, the size of it and how that um, can, be, can be used. Um, we used a software uh, called PVSYST which can use this information that I've just mentioned to generate an estimated uh, generation, yearly generation uh, per system. Um, as I say, this, this, uh, this electrical generation um, given to us in kilowatt hours per year uh, was really important. The, the, the software also gave us uh, the size of the, of the system, whether it was a 4 kilowatt or a 10 kilowatt. Um, those were the two uh, preferred sizes um, uh, in accordance with the, the roof size and, and the roof uh, dimensions. Um, and those were the two kind of preferred. It also gave us different options on inverter size um, and different makes and different uh, sizes, so, so that was important as well. Um, but what was really important uh, was, uh, apart from the technology, was also looking at the, the economic viability. Um, and uh, in order to do that, uh, we have a matrix and a spreadsheet uh, that could um, give us different outputs in terms of the capital costs um, from the PVs and the inverters. Um, so th that spreadsheet really um, looked at the capital cost of the material, um, the maintenance costs throughout uh, a year or, or, or the different uh, stages, um, inverter replacement, whether it's every five years or eight years, depending on, on warranties and, and guarantees. Um, the kilowatt generation per year from the PVSYST software, uh, we would input that. Uh, any changes in feed-in tariff rates were also uh, part of the spreadsheet. The cost of, of electricity was also important um, in order to calculate the savings. Um, so that, that was part of the spreadsheet and the economic um, elements. This is just an example of uh, one of the, the properties where um, we, we obtained um, all the yearly 
um, electrical uh, needs and, and, and the, the yearly uh, use of electricity in that particular um, building. And, and we portrayed that in the, in the report uh, in order to get an indication of how much energy and what the target was in some cases um, in order to size uh, the, 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 the systems appropriately. We then came up with um, a matrix to look at the different technology and assessing whether um, we would go with uh, polycrystalline or monocrystalline and looking at the outputs of these um, and really uh, looking at the pros and cons, uh, the amount of, of panels that, that, that would involve, uh, the amount of inverters um, and the output, the, the, the yearly output. Um, and then out of those three, um, in some cases four or five uh, different alternatives, we would select one of them uh, to conduct a, a bit more information and a, a more analysis on the actual um, location of these panels within that room. Um, and we can see the image below that, um, that in this example, uh, the, the panels were appropriately located um, in, in, the, in the roof dimensions. We also looked at electricity export wherever possible um, at, at three pence per kilowatt hour. Uh, we looked at uh, interest rates and payments uh, if a loan was, was taken um, in order to pay the capital cost. Uh, we were also quite um, very important to focus on the, on the paybacks and the periods within these 25 year periods. Um, the reason we, we picked 25 years is because most of the, the feed-in tariff um, uh, length of times were for 25 years for solar PV. So those were kind of the, the expected uh, timelines that we, we, we looked at. Um, I, again, I've mentioned the, 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 the bill savings plus the, the feed-in earnings um, to look at, uh, at the payback periods. Um, and also looking at the carbon savings uh, which were, were applied uh, as a result of, of, of that electricity being generated. So, so that was part of, of, of the whole methodology. These were applied to all of the, of the, of the buildings. Um, it's worth mentioning that uh, during the, 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 this period of, of, the, of the work carried out for the feasibility studies, there was this change of uh, feed-in tariffs um, before uh, December 2011 and also um, before uh, April 2012. So the studies have addressed these changes and in some of the summaries uh, we have done a comparison in payback between the two uh, and the changes. Again, these are some of the outputs that we, we obtain in each case study looking at the payback, looking at the capital cost investment against uh, the feed-in tariff um, and the energy savings and looking at when exactly in what year we would obtain a, a, a payback. And um, on the graph um, to the right, we've got the degradation and the, the electricity um, that is generated in the first year um, down to the 25th year um, and how the efficiency of the panels is reduced slightly as the years go by and also that blue line uh, equates to the, car the carbon savings as a result also declining. Um, so, so that's been taken into account. I will now pass on uh, the microphone to Michael Huey from Malcolm Holmes for a brief introduction on our first uh, feasibility study for Malcolm Holmes. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Michael Hu. I'm from uh, the Kenmore Housing Association and Malcolm Ken. I'm the Energy and Sustainability Coordinator. Um, before I start this part of the presentation, I just like to uh, express our uh, thanks to the European Union Regional Development Fund and the CIFIT program of the Scottish Government for providing us uh, with the funding to carry out this feasibility study uh, through the CIC Start Online program. Um, in my presentation, I am going to talk a little bit about who Malcolm Home is. Um, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about 
um, why we actually require this feasibility study and you know our journey through the PV panels installation. Um, and then I will pass that back to Julio, who will then explain a bit more details about the feasibility study. And then I will come back to um, tell you a little bit more about what and what's not expected uh, from the feasibility study and, and uh, what we think of it. Uh, and at the end, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about where we are going at the moment uh, after the feasibility study in terms of PV insulation. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> Malcolm Home is really um, it's really part of a bigger group structure called uh, the Eden Camel Group, uh, which consists of the Eden Camel Housing Association, which is uh, RSL operating, uh, sorry, RSL is a registered social landlord uh, operating in Edinburgh and the Lothian. Uh, we have currently just under about 4,000 property uh, in our management. Uh, some of them is actually in uh, five as well. Um, Malcolm Home, in fact, uh, as Julio pointed out earlier, is the private arm of uh, the Dungeon Camel Group. Uh, we manage um, uh, property which is uh, social, sorry, which is um, market rent and, and meat rent, uh, not the social rent. Um, and we also manage some property which are on sale as well. Um, under Malcolm Home, we own about 300 property, but we also manage other property for other organizations. Um, there is uh, another um, company under the Eden Camel Group, which is the New Horizon Property Services, uh, which is a factoring company, and we <coughs> currently uh, have about uh, 3,000 property under the management, under, under the portfolio and they provide um, property services to other organizations or to private owner. Uh, finally, we have uh, Malcolm Professional Services, which, uh, pro which offer a range of um, services to, um, to other people, and that's including um, property uh, uh, development agency services, uh, maintenance work, uh, including kitchen and bathroom replacement and carpet work services, uh, energy assessment and um, project management as well. Um, in this slide, we uh, want to tell you a little bit about um, our, uh, what we have been doing in terms of energy efficiency and sustainability as an organization. Um, we don't look at, we didn't look at energy efficiency and sustainability just in the, recently. We have been doing a lot of energy work uh, in the past. Um, just over 10 years ago, we built one of the uh, more um, sustainability advanced uh, housing development in Edinburgh, the Slated Green Housing. Uh, and at the time, is um, probably one of the leading uh, uh, forefront uh, development uh, in terms of sustainability. Um, since then, we have trialed various technology uh, including uh, wind turbine, uh, biomass boiler, uh, solar hot water, uh, and recently solar PV and also uh, air source heat pump as well. Um, we have our own sustainability policy and action plan, and they are actually um, run by uh, a group of employer, em employee within the organization from various departments. Uh, and they are the sustainability working group, and they also act as champion within uh, each department and each team to more, promote sustainability within the staff. Um, we uh, have our separate uh, energy strategy and action plan, um, which come into being in the last year or so to address uh, fuel poverty and um, and various other issues relating energy, uh, including the um, uh, Climate Change Scotland Act, uh, Scottish Housing Quality Standard, um, and various government initiatives. Um, just basically want to get ourselves more energy efficient. Um, we are also 
one of the first uh, small to medium sized enterprise company in this country to take part in the Carbon Trust Carbon Management Program. Um, we also have uh, staff uh, who are trained and qualified under the City and Gill uh, Energy Awareness course, which qualify them to uh, provide energy uh, um, advice to, to the tenant. <clears throat> Can I have the next slide, please? Right. Our journey um, on the PV panels. Um, PV panels, we have been aware of this technology for quite some time. Um, like an, any other um, registered social landlord, uh, we haven't been able to install any PV panel or considering using PV panels in the past because of the, um, the, the capital cost of it. Um, and then come the government feeding tariffs which uh, open a window of opportunity for us to think about putting PV panels onto our development. In 2010, we are building, we were building uh, 58 units of shelter housing in a regeneration area in Edinburgh. And in this development, we have a number of uh, communal facility, uh, like the resident communal lounge, um, laundry facility, um, a scooter charger facility and various meeting room and also an office. And it makes sense that we put PV panels on this development to service the communal area to uh, benefit the tenant uh, collectively. So that's our first PV installation in, in, in our organization. And we put in a system of uh, 10 kilowatt peak system in this um, uh, development and currently this development is fully occupied and I understand that it's been running quite successfully. Next slide, please. While we are actually uh, working on the shelter housing scheme, um, we realize that we have a bit of knowledge about PV panel. We want to extend that knowledge onto our existing property and we started looking at um, selecting a few properties that we want to carry out pilot um, installation uh, onto our existing property. Um, we we look at um, a few property and we eventually actually got board approval in uh, 2011, early part of 2011, to carry out more detailed study on four of our buildings. One is a city centre based shelter housing scheme. Again, we are thinking of doing um, PV panel to service the communal area. Um, another one is in, uh, in the leaf conservation area, which is our uh, homeless hostel. Um, <clears throat> uh, that is actually a listed building as well. Um, we also look at our own head office and our workshop in uh, Mid Lothian. Um, this uh, journey actually provides us with invaluable uh, experience um, regarding PV insulation and the design and the planning of it. Uh, we just learn a lot of, get a lot of knowledge from that. Um, unfortunately, the insulation will actually hold um, in October uh, when the government uh, announced um, the, the plan to reduce the feeding tariff for PV insulation completed after the 11th of December. Um, we just wasn't able to carry that out um, by, by that deadline, so the insulation was hold. Um, but I will come back to that in, in, in this insulation later. Um, while we are looking at the um, um, ritual fit pilots, um, we realize that we potentially want to extend our experience onto the rest of our stock and see how they can uh, benefit from uh, PV ritual fitting. Um, we look at various aspects of our property. Um, but we soon realized that with 4,000 property on our hand, this is 
quite a big task to do uh, on our own, and we, we think that we will need to get some help from uh, academic or, or external consultancy. Uh, when we learn about the Kickstart Online program, uh, we think that that is a wonderful opportunity for us to liaise with the academic consultant to look at that. Um, as an organization, we could look, we, we have looked at uh, the physical aspect, um, the structural aspect, uh, sorry, the physical aspect, the planning aspect, and the social aspect of our stock. And we are able to filter out some of the property uh, for the feasibility study. But for structural, technical, and economic, we do actually, we do actually require some help on those aspects. Um, in our select, uh, through, through our filtering system, we select uh, six of our property for the feasibility study. Two of them is the shelter housing scheme uh, in the city centre of Edinburgh, and then there's another two tenement blocks which is also based in the city centre as well. Um, we have one development which got a biomass boiler as a communal heating system, which have quite a high electricity bill. Um, and then finally, we pick one development which got individual houses, uh, which we want to see how that will benefit uh, the individual properties. Um, without further ado, I pass that back to Julio to um, give you the uh, briefing on the more detailed study of, of our feasibility study. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. Um, these are some images of, of some of the, the properties that we we, we, we looked at and we addressed. Um, after a, a quite an extensive filtering of, of the best suited uh, houses um, and, and, and properties um, as part of, of Malcolm Homes, um, we, we selected six uh, properties, as Michael was mentioning. Uh, these were located throughout Edinburgh, but mainly uh, in the south and central part. Uh, with locations um, and, and, and houses, for example, Cathay Court, La Suede Road, um, Fair Hill and Ox Gangs, etc. So, so they were quite spread around uh, the city. We concentrated on three for this webinar. Um, these are the locations, sorry, um, around, uh, around Edinburgh. We concentrated on, on three properties uh, for this webinar. Uh, the Cathay Court one, Dryden Gate uh, and Duff Street, um, and they, they they were they were part of. I mean, these three were were quite uh, significant in the study, uh, and as they had different constraints and different um, elements that were interesting to 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 bring in this seminar. I'll start with Cathay Court. As I say, all the methodology that I've mentioned before has been applied to 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 these uh, studies. So. So um, I'll just show some of the results. But just as an overview, Cathay Court, a uh, four-storey um, apartment block, uh, T-shaped uh, building uh, with a double centre split pitched roof. Um, there are two areas or two nucleus uh, within the, the, the building. Um, one faces the Water of Leith, the, the canal area, um, and the other one um, intersects and, and perpendicular with, with the, away from the canal. The building was uh, built around 1995, um, and it consists of 33 uh, sheltered, um, sorry, self-contained uh, two, two apartment flats um, suitable for couples or, or single, single, single occupants. What's important to highlight is that this, um, the, the, any energy that was going to be produced by the PVs in this case was going to be used for, for communal areas. Um, and these would have been um, applied to a, a lift, uh, lounge areas that, that obviously have lighting and, and, and electric, electrical requirements, laundry areas, guest facilities, um, and any garden light and external. Um, these are images of Cathay Court. Uh, we can see that on the left-hand side, we've got um, a bird's eye view of, 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 the, of the building where I've highlighted um, the optimum uh, roof that was selected um, and used for, for this study. And in the same way, the photographs um, on the right-hand side, where I've highlighted again um, just where the panels have been envisioned 
um, to be installed. The image below is a, is a view towards the water of Leith. Um, after uh, using the PVSYS software and after applying uh, the cost parameters and the capital cost, um, we came up with uh, a series of, of, uh, of results. Uh, the PVSYS software came up um, and, and we, we, together with the software, we arranged the, the, the panels accordingly um, on that roof that was, we selected bearing in mind all the constraints, bearing in mind any uh, service areas, um, any uh, pipe work that was around uh, the roof, etc. Um, and also uh, distributing it uh, electrically uh, as best as possible. So this was kind of the arrangement uh, that, that we selected. In terms of, of some of the, the outputs and the, and the, and the results, uh, after doing all of our spreadsheets and, and calculations um, and after assessing both uh, feed-in tariff before um, December 2011 and after um, and just before, um, sorry, just after uh, the 4th, uh, um, April uh, 2012, we looked at the payback comparison. Um, so, for example, we had eight years before uh, as a payback um, and now with this change in feed-in tariff, it uh, goes up to 12. Um, carbon savings up to 97 tonnes per, uh, for the whole 25-year uh, cycle um, of, the, of the installation, um, with a number of 42 uh, panels on the roof, um, giving us an array size um, of just under 10 kilowatt peak system. After the 25 years, it is estimated that just under 190 a thousand kilowatt hours would be produced, which is uh, quite considerable. Um, but in comparison with what is actually being used, um, we we have an electrical demand uh, in communal areas of 37,000 per year, um, and each year we would be able to produce 7,900 um, um, kilowatt hours. So, I mean, it's not 100 percent, but it's it's benefiting and producing quite uh, um, quite a lot. I move on to Dryden Gate, um, again just an overview, uh, apartments built in the 1980s. Uh, we focused on three uh, areas, three stairs within the complex um, that were very similar in roof type. Uh, they were appropriate for, for, uh, for, for orientation as best as possible um, and, and had a, a considerable um, roof space um, to, to accommodate PVs. Uh, these were stairs one, five, and six. Very similar um, setting, very similar roof type um, and dimension. So, so, so we analysed just one and estimated that that could be replicated in the other two. Uh, so these are some of the images. Uh, there's communal areas, external communal areas around it. So there's a lot of external uh, lighting. There's um, there's an interesting kind of. Uh, pathway around around the buildings, um, so it's, an, it's suitably um, for for solar PVs. Again, this was the 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 the, the arrangement of solar PVs for for each one of those routes for those stairs, um, divided into three strings, three 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 circuits, um, with a total of uh, forty two panels. Um, and an array size for each one of them, again, just under 10 kilowatt peak uh, system. And very similar to the previous one, uh, the payback uh, between the two different feed-in tariffs, um, eight years before December 2011 um, and 12 years uh, just uh, after uh, the change um, in, in feed-in tariff. So obviously that's been an impact. And very similar um, to the previous one, we've got uh, yearly generations against the actual electrical demand. In this case, it's over uh, that uh, demand, um, so a lot of that uh, electricity could be exported back to gain another um, income from that. Following that, uh, our final one with Malcolm Holmes was, uh, for this webinar was uh, Duff Street. Um, a more modern approach, a more modern, uh, a quite recently uh, built uh, set of apartments, uh, 1993 blocks, 
Um, in this case, uh, Malcolm Holmes uh, is part of and, 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 and deals with, with these two properties, these two building apartments, um, 44 and 46. Uh, and, and, and it was, again, aimed at uh, looking at uh, electricity for communal areas. These are some of the images. We can see that that tilt of the roof uh, wasn't uh, appropriate for that orientation and that location. And in this case, we did look at um, enhancing the tilt for the most appropriate and the best output uh, uh, of electricity. And again, we've got the split of the two roofs in the two um, uh, uh, blocks uh, with this central uh, maintenance uh, pathway, uh, so we, we, we tried to, to, to locate these um, on, on either side uh, and distribute the, the panels appropriately. In terms of the, of the results, uh, similar again because we're looking at the same, very similar size in, in PV array, in this case slightly lower but 9.75 kilowatt peak, uh, a bit less in, in panels. Uh, but very similar output yearly uh, generation uh, of 7,600 kilowatt hours um, and just over uh, the, the total communal area uh, electricity demand. So, so again, uh, fulfilling um, the communal needs but exporting um, out uh, into the grid. And finally, just a summary of, of all the properties. What's important here is really to highlight the carbon savings um, and the, different, the, the difference in payback um, from one feed-in tariff on another. And it oscillates between four and five years from one uh, feed-in tariff to another. So that was, that was important for, for Malcolm Holmes to, to take into account. And finally, some of the, some of the savings per, per different uh, location. Um, the lower uh, um, CO2 savings from, from smaller uh, systems and the higher savings obviously from, from higher systems and also that influences the feed-in tariff, etc. Um, I'll now just to finalise uh, Malcolm Holmes, I'll pass over to, to, to Michael just to, to finish. Thank you. Um, the outcome of the feasibility study um, really fulfill what we were expecting. Um, on the list there, um, those are the items that we were expecting the um, report will, will fulfill and, and most of it is really uh, have been uh, um, done. Um, the last two items, the impact on addressing fuel property, that has touched on by the report, um, but we realize that to make detailed study of the fuel property issue probably will require a more uh, detailed study uh, separately. So, um, but we're happy with what is in the report about that. Um, the investigation of uh, various procurement method, um, we didn't, again, we didn't go into different kind of procurement method in details, but there's a very uh, good study at the end of the report on rented roof scheme, which highlight a few issues that we have to uh, watch out if we are considering going down to that procurement route. Next slide, please. Um, one thing that I have to say is a little bit unexpected for us, uh, but it's very useful, is the way the, the PV panels and, and arrangement were actually analyzed. There were three different options uh, with different kind of PV panels and, and different arrangement, and that it's unexpected for us, but it's going to be very useful. It's just going to help us to uh, scrutinize on the specification of the panel better when we actually produce our uh, tender document in the future, if we decide to go to do more PV panels. Um, following the study, what we have been doing is, uh, or what, what has happened is, uh, the, the study finished right about October, uh, just after the government announced the reduction of feeding tariff. And that that's actually halt everything that we are doing, um, including the pilot, as I told you earlier before. Um, after the new year, uh, when we come back uh, to work, 
we find that there's a window opportunity for us to finish off the pilot, and we managed to do that in, in uh, February. Um, and um, since then, we also have a couple of new scheme that we have now put in PV panel. One is a 60 center uh, new um, flatted development. Uh, again, we use PV to service a communal area. Um, we also have uh, an experimental house in the south of Edinburgh, southern Asia of Edinburgh, um, which we call it Eco House, and it's the first house that we can actually achieve in terms of energy performance of A rating. So that's very good news. We basically use PV panel there to power air source pump, so it doesn't rely on gas or um, rely on very minimal electricity to heat the the the, the, the house. Um, will we be doing any more PV ritual fitting uh, as a result of the report? We haven't got any immediate plan just now, but what the report show us is that it's still financially viable. So I would not rule it out and we definitely will be looking into that further. Um, thank you very much for listening to this part of the presentation. I now pass you on to John McNorrell from uh, East Hoff Housing Cooperative. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. Um, my name is John McMorrow. I'm the director of East Hall Park Housing Cooperative. I'm going to give you a wee bit of background as to what we do and why we wanted to do the study and what we're going to do with it in the future. East Hall Park is a fully mutual housing cooperative uh, based in the Easter House area of Glasgow, formed some 20 years ago. In fact, next Friday, I celebrate 20 years doing the same job. I can't believe how great I've got over the years, which is a bit unfortunate. But these things happen. And we have a small stock portfolio in relation to most. We only have some like 750 units, of which 695 are fully rented. Three shared ownership and a further 52 are factored. We have a turnover of 2.5 million, small staff team of 12. But we believe that we've got a proven reputation in doing much more than housing. And that's what we want to try and deliver as we look at how we can assist people in their communities. And that was really the focus for looking at this particular study. So if we move on to the next slide, it'll give you an indication as to our sustainability strategy. We wanted to initially make sure that people had awareness of what was required in relation to sustainability. So we undertook um, various training aspects, making sure that literature was um, circulated amongst the community that the staff had an understanding of what we were trying to achieve. And we wanted to provide staff with basic skills to allow them to provide the basic energy advice that they needed to give to residents, remembering that residents and how they use their homes will have the greatest impact on carbon savings in the future. And as a consequence of that, we developed some energy advice and publicity materials. We did um, um, not just looking at solar panels, but in the past, when it came to our office, we actually installed wind turbines to ensure that we were trying to develop the whole sustainability strategy. We looked at a new build um, that we've recently just carried out in the last year, and we made sure that we got an equal assessment carried out, which is a very good rating, and we achieved that reasonably comfortably. And I suppose the next stage when it comes to new build is to think about how can we develop that to the excellent rating and maybe looking at um, panels in the future. However, who knows what's going to happen in relation to new build developments, in relation to the high regimes, and what funding is available. So that's in relation to the training, uh, in relation to the new build development. If we move on now to the next slide, it helps us appreciate that when we looked at sustainability, it's about the whole environment. We even carried out an environmental project in relation to derelict land, an old school site that wasn't used, we created a new office. That's where we did the wind turbines as well. And when we looked at this derelict ground, we looked at the biodiversity, introducing native plant species into the area, and making sure that we upgraded and increased the lifespan by using mature trees so that we could create a whole biodiversity um, concept. And as part of that work, the general type of things that we looked at also was recycling, making sure households were aware of how they could recycle and have an impact on the planet uh, and ecology, and educating communities 
and sustainability issues. So our focus has started from the people and specific projects delivered as a consequence of that. And if we move on to our next slide, we then realised, well, there's much more than just these projects. We had to look at the financial inclusion aspect and the poverty strategy that we've got. And the action plans that we're looking at are to make sure that that advice, the tenancy support to tenants, is continued. And we particularly wanted to focus in on financial exclusion and also to make sure that we dealt with the concept of fuel poverty. As Julio mentioned earlier on, the more that 1% um, increase, the significant that impacts on people who are in the greatest poverty and living or working in an area where there is lots of um, fuel poverty, we wanted to try and address that as much as possible. So we looked at early intervention schemes to assist people, help them maybe get the benefits from their electricity. We've identified vulnerable and at risk groups. We're also trying to remove, reduce the impact of fuel poverty in our housing stock. We're in a very unique position and the majority of our stock is either new build or refurbished. We're very few unimproved properties. In fact, only those that have been inherited from Glasgow Housing Association in the last year. And that would be about 40, 50 properties that may actually not be improved. So we're in a good position where most of our stock is high energy efficient, but we wanted to go one step further. That's the reason for the study. And part of that work was to work with other agencies that can support us. And we're really very thankful for the work that's been carried out in relation to the study. So we move on to the next slide. Um, what we're going to do is hand over to Julio, who will explain some of the technical aspects of the study. And later on, we'll look at how we can benefit from it. Thank you, John. Um, uh, moving on to, to the actual case studies, um, very similar to the, the previous uh, Housing Association, we selected three that were key to, to the study. Um, in this case, um, as we can see in this image here, uh, this is the, 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 the East Hall uh, Park um, uh, sites. Um, number one is, uh, is the, the East Hall uh, uh, development site. Um, and phase number two, or uh, number two in that uh, map, is the Kilder Mori uh, set of, of properties. Um, uh, number one is is part of this uh, retrofit and and, uh, and uh, area. It's it's, it's quite a, it's a, it's a built up area. And number two is part of um, an urban regeneration that's uh, that's been undergone. Um, where new builds um, in the last five years um, have been uh, populating that area, um, and and in this case, uh, some of the, the they've been uh, some of the PB solutions have been applied to already built uh, recent houses um, and recent uh, properties. Um, so again, six properties were were analysed, um, four in Easter House. Um, and two in this Kilder Mori uh, site, um, which um, uh, was, was key to, to, to really addressing both areas. Uh, but uh, what's important in, in, in both of them is that a lot of repetition of, of house type and roof type um, was quite beneficial to the study because, as, as I'll explain in the summary, uh, a lot of the, the analysed properties, uh, these six properties, could be uh, implemented into other similar um, buildings that had the same orientation and the same roof type, so so that was quite advantage. That was a good advantage, um, and 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 a, a small calculation could be done on on carbon savings, uh, kind of estimated carbon savings. So in this case, we're going to be analysing uh, Wardy Road, uh, Ware Road, and uh, finally in Kildare Mori, uh, the uh, Arnisdale uh, Road. Uh, starting on with uh, Wardy Road, uh, it's a property located in the south of Easter House, uh, in that site one that I mentioned uh, in the first slide. A uh, property that's already been refurbished. Uh, it's, it's been part of this um, continued uh, uh, maintenance uh, regime and, 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 and improving the standards and, and the quality of life in, in these properties. Uh, this was conducted in the late 1990s. Um, and most of them are flats for rent. Um, the focus here is really to look at uh, the output um, and the, 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 the biggest generation uh, to just distribute into individual flats. And in some cases, 
um, it could be applied into communal areas. But but in this case, it was it was really to to distribute around flats in this in this property. Um, the building is is a, a standard uh, timber structured roof uh, with concrete tiles, uh, and and the very as I say, mentioned before, there's a lot of similarities in other buildings around around that area uh, where replication could could. Uh, could be developed. This is one of the blocks uh, on, on Wardy Road uh, and I've highlighted uh, the, the, the building that we've concentrated the study but as can be seen the, the neighbours beside it, the different uh, blocks uh, around it can have the same methodology applied to it obviously with a different procurement method uh, but it's the same orientation, same, same problem. Um, so again that can be um, installed uh, similar. These, these are some of the images of, of these apartment blocks um, and very representative in, in all of the, the, the buildings. Um, the, the building that we, we looked at um, and, and, and the software and, uh, that we, we applied, uh, all, that, all that information that I mentioned in the methodology um, gave us this distribution of, of solar panels uh, with taking advantage of the majority of, of, of that roof with the exception of that uh, central uh, element that's extruded out just uh, could have um, um, portrayed some kind of shading etc so we, we kind of uh, to, uh, didn't look around uh, that area but in this case uh, the study was done before uh, any changes were announced for the 12th, uh, for December uh, 2011, so only that the analysis for for that uh, payback was was looked at. So in this example, eight years payback, uh, the number of panels would have been 40 in that example, um, with um, around 94 tons of, of carbon being saved throughout the 25 years, um, and. Uh, uh, those 40 panels would have, uh, are estimated to produce 7,700 kilowatt hours um, in comparison with the actual uh, electrical demand um, it's quite it's lower um, but uh, appropriate distribution of that energy whether on, on, on some of the apartments or just into communal areas um, could work out uh, quite well. Uh, moving on to the next property, we've got Ware Road, very similar to the other one. Uh, in this case, um, it's a, an individual terraced, uh, set of terraced houses. Um, a lot of them in, 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 in this area uh, with similar roof types. This one's located in the northeast of the, of the Easter House development in that site one. Um, we've got, um, it, it's a terraced house um, and in this particular example, You've got people uh, occupying uh, the ground floor and other people occupying another family in the, in the top floor. So the distribution of whatever energy um, would have been produced and is produced um, could be uh, well managed um, in that case. Properties uh, built around the 1990s um, and as I say, so located as, as terraces. This is a, a, a bird's eye view, a, a, an image from the top. Um, in this case, it's the, it's the end property of these terraced houses and this kind of cluster of, of buildings. But we can see similarities on the neighbours um, side by side. So, so the, 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 the repetition can be, can be applied. Um, the image on the left um, is, is this uh, a property. Um, and that's the, 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 the roof that we analysed and that we saw appropriate in, in terms of the orientation. Um, and um, which really gives you a, quite a, a clean, clean roof to to do to work on. Um, and this was this was the um, the kind of distribution of the, of the panels in, in that case. Again, using the PVSYS software for. It. And in terms of some of the solutions, uh, some of the outputs and the and the and the results, a 40, 40 panels um, on them, um, thirty two. Um, uh, tons of, of carbon being saved after 25 years, 11 years payback um, with a system of four kilowatts um, as opposed to the others which are larger, bigger roof space, obviously a larger system. In this case it was just four kilowatts. 
um, and giving us an electrical uh, output um, of just um, of just around 3,000 kilowatt hours, um, and an estimated electrical demand for the two, um, the ground floor and the first floor, of around 6,000. So, so you are um, fulfilling um, a good part of, of the energy needs for, the, for that household. And finally, um, we've got 73 uh, Arnisdale Road, as I mentioned, uh, recent, more recent properties um, within the last five years uh, as part of this urban regeneration. Uh, but again, because it's already been built, it's, it's, it's related and it's, uh, it's, it's mentioned to be a, a retrofit because it's, it's an add-on of, of technology. Um, so in this case, it's a three-storey house. The attic space has been used. Uh, so it's quite a, a large, um, large property um, with, with a lot of uh, electrical demand for a large family. Again, we've got the, the, the bird's eye view the, the, uh, from the top uh, and on the side, on, on the image uh, on the right hand side, the distribution of the panels in that, uh, in that uh, property. And finally, some of the, the summary results. Um, in this case, we're talking about 16 panels um, with a, a total uh, uh, generation um, per year of just under 3,000 kilowatt hours. And if we estimate the, the electrical demand for that property, for the size of it, um, you are reaching nearly, well, just over uh, half of, of, the, of, of the needs, um, so, so fulfilling quite a lot. Um, and having 11 years payback. Um, it's a smaller system, so it, it takes uh, the larger capital um, um, demand um, has that larger payback. And in terms of the results, as I mentioned before, a lot of replication in a lot of similar properties with similar orientation. So what we did in this example, in this uh, report, was located um, all these properties that could have the same system as all the, the six analysed, uh, made an estimated account of them, and those estimated carbon savings um, <laughs> could be multiplied with the number of homes uh, that are similar uh, to give us an estimated uh, carbon um, uh, savings for that uh, development for both phases, for both the sites. Um, so that gave East Hall Park an, uh, a good kind of roundup and panorama of, of what um, what the savings could be um, and the technology that, that it needed to, to reach it. Um, and again, just a summary of, of, the, of the savings per property um, and how um, the, the, the different paybacks um, uh, fitted into. And I think John is just going to, to summarise how well um, the report um, came in line with, with, with their expectations. Thanks, Julio. Um, really must highlight that the report was excellent. One of the ways that we had initially anticipated carrying out the solar PV work was to actually go down the rent-a-roof model where basically the tenants would receive all the benefits and we may get a small piece of funding. And one of the, the significant benefits of this report was it allowed us to analyse the information that was coming from the rent -a roof companies to help us understand whether we were getting good value for money. So that was one of the benefits. Downside though was this was done prior to the change to the feed-in tariffs. So as a consequence of that, there has been one or two issues as to how we develop it further. We had initially anticipated having 180 units on site just after um, December, and unfortunately, as a consequence of the speed in tariffs, that's had a significant impact. And we're now re-evaluating how best we progress. Do we still continue with the rent roof model, or do we look at maybe trying to um, self-finance that ourselves? Another issue that's maybe not mentioned in reports is the relationship with lenders and their views of um, the introduction of solar PVs to properties. We did experience some difficulties with the banks and the building societies who previously have security over our homes and they were looking for us to then renegotiate existing loans because they said that the reality was the security or the value of the property would be reduced. However, we don't believe that to be the case and we're now in negotiations with them 
but that's maybe something to be aware of is that the banks and the building societies are looking to recoup costs so we need to be very careful when you go down the route of installing solar PVs. Our community and our committee are quite committed to the concept of trying to reduce fuel poverty. That will always be the driver for us. None of us were thinking about an income in relation to this, but we recognise that if we did get any income, we would offset that against other houses. And that's maybe very important to reflect if you do get any um, income as a consequence of this. But sound basis for us developing things further and hopefully we'll be in a position where we can install solar PVs in the, in the immediate future, um, but only time will tell as we look at the changes to the feed-in tariffs and the consequences of them ever changing over the years to come. And the other concept of what a community group is involved in the consultation that the government had issued, so we'll wait and see what happens in relation to that. So hopefully that gives you a flavour of our work, what we're trying to achieve, how we're community focused and how solar PVs can assist not just older houses but even recent new build properties and because it's all about benefits for people. We're now going to move on to Wendy Farmer from Port of Leith who will give her, her, her experience of her, her study. Thank you John, thanks. Um, yes, I'm Wendy Farmer, I'm the property manager in uh, Port of Leith Housing Association in the property and new business department. And um, we were very pleased to obtain CIC Start funding to enable us to take part in this study. Um, I'll give you a brief overview on the next slide. I'll give you a brief overview of Port of Leith. First of all, this is our vision, which is making our homes and neighbourhoods great places to live in. And there's an image there on the left-hand side of a recent um, development in Western Harbour, a recent placid development. Um, so we can move on. Um, briefly, who we are, we're a not-for-profit not social landlord and charity and we provide high-quality affordable homes in Leith and North Edinburgh. Our area of activity really stretches between Grantham in the west and Portobello in the east, um, going far as, as south as um, Bingham and Magdalen. We were formed in 1975 and since then we've invested more than £146 million in the Leith area. Um, starting out mainly through tenement rehabilitation, um, but since the 80s we obtained funding for new build. And we now own and manage over 2,200 homes, housing 3,300 people. Most of our housing is social rented, which includes three sheltered units, um, but we've, we also have shared ownership housing. And recently we've started to develop intermediate rent housing, so it's mid-market rent through our non-charitable subsidiary Persevere Developments Limited. We're also, we also take part in a number of wider community initiatives, including financial inclusion and our TOIL program, which is training opportunities in Lothian, which provides work placements for school leavers. Um, why did we get involved in this study? Um, we were very keen to, to look at, we were keen to look at um, retrofitting PV panels on our existing stock. Um, we hadn't, well up until now, we haven't installed any PV panels on any of our stock, although we have two developments that are currently in development, which currently in, under construction, which um, will have PV panels on them as part of the construction. Um, we've recently put solar thermal panels on one of our developments, um, but as I say, no PV uh, panels as yet. Uh, we were keen to um, carry out an initial pilot study um, with a view to reducing our dependence on the national grid um, and promoting renewable technology, um, using FITS income and electricity savings to, to fund energy efficiency works across our wider stock and to promote carbon dioxide reduction technologies um, and also to use the pilot study as a learning process for possible future phases. Uh, before we contacted Napier, we had already selected a number of properties um, based on orientation and suitability of the roof pitch and the roof covering, um, access arrangements for scaffolding, and depending on the extent of um, daytime electricity use in the buildings. Um, we were particularly keen to um, include our head office, obviously because of the um, electricity use um, during the day. Um, and we also included our sheltered housing, our three sheltered housing schemes. 
Um, the nine properties that we selected um, were a mixture of general needs, sheltered, um, and they also included properties within the leaf conservation area and also those outside, that fell outside the area. Um, there's a summary there of the nine properties. Um, yes, yeah, so four of them fall within the conservation area and five of them are outside of the conservation area. And eight of them have got lifts and one of them at Lawn Street, there was no lift. Um, we were looking primarily at um, fitting the PV panels, connecting into the landlord's supply uh, for this, certainly for this um, pilot um, phase. Um, we haven't yet, as yet, looked at um, connecting directly into um, tenants' meters, but that's certainly something that we would consider for a future phase, um, particularly with the, um, as we are keen as well to address fuel poverty. Um, we are looking at the moment to uh, cross-subsidise wider energy efficiency works across our wider stock. Um, the next one. Okay, I think I'll go over to back to Julia, Julia now to um, look at the detail. Um, in fact, I'll pass over to, to my colleague, John Stinson, um, who, who will continue and, and talk us through the slides. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so the format of the study took the, sec the same as the, the last that Julio spoke about. So the slides are not very familiar with just different headline figures. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, after Port Leith had passed over the, the list of properties to us, we went out and, and surveyed each of the each of the selected roof areas and and seeing which which of the areas were were prevalent to to have PVs sited on them, and within a, the cost associated for the <clears throat> the four kilowatt peak systems, the ten kilowatt peak systems, primarily because they were the highest rate of return, or they were the highest um, tariff on the tariff feed in tariff structure, and then we once again went through the economic um, analysis for the for the feed-in tariff structure based on the April figures. This particular report and study was, was passed over or was conducted at the start of the year, so we didn't didn't look at, at pre-December figures. Um, so just the just the April ones of 16 16.8 p for the, the 10 kilowatt and, and 21 p for the 4 kilowatt. Um, yeah the the properties that Port Leith passed, passed over to us where there's a wide, wide ranging uh, list of properties there. They're, they're right across the, the Leith area. Um, lots of different archetypes, um, as, as Wendy mentioned. Uh, a few of them were sheltered housing, age range between 20 years of difference. Um, but once again, as mentioned before, primarily any, PV, any electricity that was going to be generated by the PV uh, system sited on the, the locations were for the communal use in these areas. Uh, the challenges for and the, the constraints for uh, based on this study uh, was looking at the proposal document. We, we looked quite closely at the proposal document issued by DECC uh, on February of, of this year. Uh, they were introducing um, new constraints, they were introducing new eligible, uh, eligibility um, uh, status, uh, most notably was the, the multiple um, multiple installation tariff and then the, um, the requirements based on the EPC rating. The, the multiple installation tariff, um, ultimately any more than uh, 25 property or 25 installations for, for one individual or for a community project, then the tariff structure drops down by 80% by off the, the existing April, April, April tariffs. Um, luckily enough, there wasn't uh, any more than 25 uh, in this particular feasibility study. However, it's not overly clear in that uh, consultant, consultancy paper uh, whether this includes housing associations and community projects, and that, that's yet to be defined. Um, so for, for the assumptions made for this report, we just stuck with the, the April, April figures. Um, EPCs uh, were also based um, on, on a D rating. We had a little look uh, at the end of our report based on what if the, the properties at Port Elite have weren't D, and that means um, the, the tariff structure is, is slightly lower, but, but more, more or less a lot of them were, were, were D or above, so, so that wasn't, wasn't taken into consideration. As far as EPCs are concerned, it's not overly clear in, in any of the, the 
the reports produced by the DEC whether the communal areas need to have an EPC or if it's a collective EPC for all the, the properties in that block. Um, but I'm, I'm led to believe that's something that's going to come out uh, in more clarity in, in, in the future. Um, next, next slide, please. Yeah, this is just a, a picture a map of Leith area, more or less, uh, taking this from the, the um, City of Edinburgh Council. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is just the yeah, this is the conservation area. Conservation area is high, highlighted in the Leith area, and the next slide will show the highlighted area of which the vast majority of, of Port of Leith properties for this study were located in. So quite a few were located there uh, and right in the right in the heart of the conservation area. That brought with it its own constraints um, under the town and uh, country planning uh, order 2011. So there were assumptions based on, on discussions we had with the city planners um, based on whereabouts we can the ideal position to put these PV panels based on what what surface or what um, facade was in a listed area, which facade uh, we could actually place uh, um, panels on. I'll go through three case studies just now and highlight highlight where this was applicable and where this this uh, this was um, a part of the the decision process. The first one's on Ferry Road, um, right in the, the heart of the conservation area. You see in the picture there, the top right hand side, that there's a, a dual roof is accessed by a, a, a walkway. Picture below that is a more detailed photograph of the the roof behind the front facade. So couldn't place any photograph, uh, couldn't place any PV panels on the front, uh, which meant our, our accessible area to generate electricity through the PV system was was reduced to about 35, 45 meters squared. Back to the way, Julio. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, so like most properties that the Port of Leith um, uh, manage, these were very, it's a very high structure, four or five stories high, so there was no implication of shading from other buildings or from, from foliage. Um, next, next slide. Yeah, we have an animation here which we put together a model of the building. And this is a simplified model of taking away all the all the um, other buildings. So this is just a model of the the solar movement, um, solar radiation during a, a peak period in, um, in June, and just this helps us to identify um, where shading could occur, and especially in a property like this, which has the the, the dual roof. Uh, the next slide will show the the same. The next animation will will show the same. Same sighting of PV panels, but for a for a December, um, for a December sighting, so we see a little bit of shading occurring because the sun is is slightly lower lower there, uh, and this is a model. It's a useful tool for us to to really add some real world parameters to the PV panels and to make sure that we're we're sighting correct figures and we're given we're given our, our uh, Port of Leith and other housing associations and, and other other partners of most. Figures for annual um, generation as as close as as, as uh, realistically as possible. The next slide. Um, it's just a few headline figures. Not going to spend too long on this, but whilst we are calculating the economical um, uh, analysis for the for the property, we we added on um, uh, uh, degradation. Um, Percentage for the the PV panels and the inverter, so the the generating uh, capacity of the PVs will will deteriorate will will, will will go down over the 25 year period. The electricity requirement for the building was based on um, it was based on demand analysis of past trends, and we had a another escalation uh, percentage in there for for increased demand over the next couple of years. So. Um, based on on those figures, we made assumptions as, as close as as reasonably practical. So we've seen the the carbon savings there are based on on uh, a multiplication factor through the through the carbon trust, multiplying the amount of of, of uh, electricity generated by the by how much the you would be saved through through um, grid electricity from a from electric from electricity power power station. Next slide. 
Second case study, um, slightly different, not in a conservation area, about four or five miles south of Ferry Road. Uh, this one has a much larger uh, roof area, about 115 metres squared. Mostly uninterrupted, there's, a, there's the, the picture there on the top left hand side, you can see, uh, that, whole face, that whole face of the roof is facing almost due south, uh, southwest type direction, and uh, there's no buildings in front of that. Uh, Leith Academy Secondary School is to the right of that. So this is an ideal position, it's an ideal location chosen by Port of Leith to, to really look at generating some uninterrupted um, um, solar um, electricity there. Next slide. Just some of the particulars about the property. Uh, I mentioned most of them already. Uh, no foliage um, uh, interruption there on the roof. Next slide, please. And this is just our, our, our ideal positioning of the PV panels based on that program, that, the software that you mentioned before. Next slide, please. And once again, the headline figures there. This is a much larger much larger area, so we were able to put a lot more panels up here and uh, to increase the amount of annual um, PV generation. And once again, the analysis was exactly the same for how much energy that just the the the, um, the building requires, and uh, we have those those escalation percentages built in to try and make the the, the figures as, as realistic as possible. Next slide, please. A third case study was was Lawrence Street. Um, not too far away from uh, from Academy Academy Park there, not in a conservation area, um, and when when the properties weren't were not in a conservation area, through the different discussions with the, the city planners, um, the PV location uh, as long as was 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 within uh, one meter um, one meter bubble or, or or one meter of the surface of the existing uh, dwelling, uh, then it was part of the permitted permitted development, but. As it's Edinburgh, and it's quite close to to conservation area. It's always it's always recommended to go through with some form of planning permission and get a lot more um, clarity closer closer to the time. Next slide, please. Yeah, this property constructed in 2001. Uh, a large portion of the roof was south southwest facing. High property, no 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 foliage or, or other building um, was going to adversely affect any PV system siting. So no shading there. Um, even though there was a large roof area available, we only looked at a small portion because we were looking at generating the electricity to cover the communal um, usage in, in, in only one of the blocks. Next slide, please. So, yeah, this is it. Um, this is where we, we decided to place the PVs um, for the property, you know, directly below that, that roof area there. Next slide. So smaller property is only um, about seven, seven um, contained dwellings inside. Um, so the, the electricity requirement was much was much slower than the other two sheltered um, properties we spoke about slightly earlier. So the PV requirement, or the PV generation here is is, is um, comes very close, and, and some sometimes the year exceeds that um, requirement inside inside the building. Um, so this is a four kilowatt kilowatt system. And we're saving in the region of 37, 37 tons per per kilogram uh, CO2 equivalent on that one. The payback. Next slide, please. Yeah. So I put together a a, um, a very simplistic graph, just going across all the properties we looked at, and um, we looked at uh, nine in total, and I think there's about 13 different PVs uh, installed uh, across these these sites. But this is just I, I added this graph just to put some context and whereabouts the the, the, the payback period is going to be based on the April April um, uh, tariff structure, but it's an, an important. Uh, I think it's important to to mention that the the tariff structure itself, with the, the most recent consultation, um, is, is is subject to change. And, and currently, within the the feed-in tariff uh, arena, we're, we're seeing quite a lot of. Um, Organic change, and it's it's quite dynamic as far as what tariffs are are set and whatnot. For for example, uh, DAC are, are consulting whether to reduce the 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 lifetime of the PV structure the PV scheme from 25 years down to 20 years, um, and the 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 tariff itself is set to change or set to to, to go through some modification coming coming July. Um, and there's there's multiple different options there on which which way the new tariff structure is going to look, um, and this is this is dependent upon the the amount of um, 
micro generation that's going to be seen over the next couple of months and if, 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 if there's more than something in the region of 200 megawatts um, electricity generated by, by new PV, micro PV installations over the next couple of months and we'll see a, a much reduced tariff structure again come July and, um, and then further down the line there's going to be a, a digression model, um, a, a mechanism in place that it uh, goes down 10% every so many months and um, for, for, for the next so many for so many months and so many years so these figures here are just based on april but when it comes, comes around to actually installing the property installing the pvs the tariff structure could be slightly different um, but it's important to mention here that across the across the sites there's 10 kilowatt peak systems four kilowatt peak systems um, and I think it's more prevalent now to, to look at the, the price of the entire system, given that um, uh, Port Leith and, and many others are looking at providing the capital up front for, for producing these, um, uh, for, for putting together um, uh, the, 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 the funding for, for, for these systems. Uh, so that's that's important to mention and I've added this um, simply because when it comes down to PVs and when it comes down to, to, to collect and pay back etc what tends to get, get, get met, uh, gets left behind is the, the um, comments on the carbon dioxide emissions see have done ultimately stepping back that's that's where we're all, all heading towards it's not a it's not a fundamental part of it but it's a, it's a key it's a key driver um, especially from a, a global perspective um, I'm going to stand too long here. I know we're short for time. Um, yes, yeah, so the report, you know, the report put together, hand over to to Port Leith. I'm going to hand it back over to to Wendy just now, and she's going to speak a, a little bit about uh, um, how they're moving forward with the report and and, and what they thought of the, the findings, etc. Okay. Um, thank you, John. Um, yes. Now we found the report very useful and informative, and um, a great knowledge base to inform our, our pilot PV installation project. Um, particularly the information on the payback periods um, gave us sufficient comfort to put a paper to the board recommending that we um, proceed with a pilot scheme. Um, what, was, what was very useful actually was uh, we established that the office wasn't um, a viable, um, one of the viable properties to, to um, install PVs on due to the orientation of the roof, um, which was a shame, but um, it meant that we were able to eliminate that. But uh, we have got five properties left that we, we also excluded. We decided because of the, the timing, we were quite keen to progress with the pilot quickly um, to try if possible to um, secure the April tariffs. Um, so for that reason, we've excluded the conservation area properties, but we've agreed we've got board approval now to go ahead with um, the five other um, non-conservation area properties. We've also um, recently appointed um, Michael and Dunedin Canmore to um, act as development agents um, for procuring the, the PVs for us um, and that's really because of the experience that Dunedin Canmore obtained um, from their first phase. Um, we thought it was a good way of encouraging partnership working and skill sharing. I think um I will now conclude just on, on overall uh, the three um, feasibility studies, just really some, some conclusions and summary. Um, we've seen that um, the reports have been looking at the, the, the feasibility studies, looking at uh, how we can reduce the, the grid dependence on, on, on energy. Uh, we've also been highlighting the, the size of the technology and how, how well they've adapted to the roofs um, and the buildings themselves as, as part of the surveys that we've done. Um, and there's, there's this uh, the constant uh, mention of the feed-in tariffs as being uh, one of the drivers uh, in, 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 in applying uh, these technologies um, and how important it is that uh, the government keep this, this funding mechanism active and, and, uh, and coherent uh, in order to, 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 to make the installations a bit more viable. Um, with the reduction of feed-in tariffs, um, can, which have been uh, in some sense uh, quite radical, um, there's also been uh, the, the kind of uh, projection towards uh, having lower uh, prices in technology, which hopefully 
can um, bring back um, the capital cost to, to a manageable uh, um, size and, uh, and, and with these lowering feeding tariffs um, we can have a, a more uh, feasible um, set of, of projects. Um, so, so there's that projection of, of technology going down in price, which, which should be good. We've also noticed that um, this increase of feed and, uh, um, of, sorry, this, this reduction in feed and tariff has uh, created an increase around three or four years um, from, from different tariffs to, to, the, the, to the more uh, up-to-date ones. Um, so, so that has obviously influenced the reports. Finally, um, I just wanted to mention, obviously, that that this this report really just looked at the size and, and the type of technologies and looking at all the constraints of, of buildings. Um, we would advise um, all the, um, the the housing associations that we've dealt with to really do an adequate building survey um, of, of of the feasibility of, of the roofs themselves and the, the structural elements. Um, and also look at a more in-depth uh, quantity surveying costing uh, mechanism um, with the current prices on, on, on PVs and other technology. Um, and, and that, that uh, sums up uh, the report. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much to all our speakers. We are aware that we are now over the time that we usually uh, have for our webinars. But uh, let's see, there is a one question here that we, uh, well, two questions, but let's start with the question of Roy Gatry of the Heat Pump people. Did the study take into account the reduction in the cost of photovoltaic panels since April this year? The new costs coincidentally ensure the same payback, payback period as the pre-April this year change in feeding tariffs. Um, I can step in. I mean, that's really what I, I mentioned in the in the conclusions um, that uh, we are hoping that that uh, reduction in costs uh, would would help the the, the paybacks. Um, we didn't do that comparison, that price comparison in these studies. Uh, mainly because uh, most of them um, were completed um, uh, just uh, just before that changeover and just after, so so it was it was complicated too. The next question is from Alex Brunel. To what do you attribute the difference in output between the best performing and least performing building studied based on output? No. Uh, well, the output is ultimately there's a number of factors that, that play when when when, when uh, I'm attributing output um, orientation. You're talking about panel uh, and PV panel efficiency. So as, as Julio mentioned earlier, you have the um, the performance of the polycrystalline and, and, and monocrystalline. So as the methodology stated, we looked at lots of different technology types, lots of different um, providers of, of PV panels. And well, I think the main main difference is whenever you're looking at orientation, even a, a slight a slight shift in orientation um, has a big factor to play. And also, when you have any shading at any time of the year as well, that that, that has a, a an a impact on it. Um, but ultimately, we made those assumptions early on in the, in the report, and then we just went with one type of panel, and we did the, the outputs based on that panel and the site constraints and the, the characteristics of the roof. That's where it went. Okay, thank you very much. There are no other questions. Uh, well, I have just a, one question, a comment on uh, what was said about the bank's evaluation of the properties with photovoltaics. The, it was mentioned that uh, the banks are saying that the properties have reduced value. And uh, that is something that uh, struck me in the news. Could we have any comment on that if you have uh, more information? I think, John, that you uh, mentioned that fact about the uh, lower evaluation of properties with photovoltaics. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting that um, certain banks are suggesting that there could be as much as a 20% reduction in the security that they have over the property. Um, now, we believe that the Council for Mortgage Lenders is now being involved in this discussion to recognise that that may not necessarily be the case. 
I think the reality is that um, banks under the rent roof model were a bit concerned that someone with, someone else would have some sort of lease over the roof of the airspace. And as a consequence of having a lease over the roof of the airspace, then in the event of a default by an RSL, which has never happened in Scotland, what would happen is if they had to sell the property on, um, that lease would result in them having to sell the property at a lower level. So what they're trying to then say is, well, we're not making any income as a consequence of giving permission to fit the, um, the panels. So what we're looking for is for you to um, actually come back with renegotiating existing loans. So we have highlighted because of the benefit of the loan arrangements that we already have in place that we're unwilling to do this. Um, although I do know certain other banks and building societies have been more relaxed and what they've looked for is um, just some income to reflect the fact that, um, that there is some um, potential changes to security. And in fact, one bank um, charged £5,000 for a letter to one housing association that I'm aware of to give them permission to, to go ahead. So we're not sure whether it's just the banks because of the banking crisis having to cover their costs or whether they're just not sure about the technology themselves and have got concerns. But the Council for Mortgage Lenders are, are looking into that and are trying to get agreements, which means that it would save some money. The other thing that we've not mentioned is the, the consequence of um, certain legal costs in relation to doing all of this and the legal work required, which could be significant. So we need to be very careful how we proceed before we actually put any solar PVs on a roof. Thank you very much. Uh, we do not have any more questions from our online audience. So I would like to thank all our speakers here uh, and to attract attention of our audience to our forthcoming event. Uh, the next webinar is on 29th of May. The title is Achieving Higher Heat Pump uh, Coefficient of Performance to the Use of Rooftop Thermal Solar Collectors. This is a study undertaken by Edinburgh Napier University and European Energy Center. Following that, on 1st of June, uh, there is a live conference entitled The Circular Economy, New Opportunities in Design and Construction. And keynote speaker here will be Dame Ellen MacArthur. This conference will take place at the University of Strathclyde, Glasgow, and it was organized and prepared by the University of Strathclyde, Glasgow and Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Just a brief introduction into this conference. Uh, it will explore opportunities for Scottish SMEs to involved in the design and construction industry around a new economy that is emerging based on design and innovation. The circular economy is a gen generic term for an industrial economy that is by design or in intention, restorative, and which, in which material flows are two types, biological nutrients designed to re-enter the biosphere safely and technical nutrients which are designed to circulate at high quality without entering biosphere. Uh, if you want to find out more about this conference and uh, the speaker at this conference and to book places, please go to our website. We look forward to welcoming you, welcoming you at our forthcoming events, and we would like to thank you for watching this webinar. Thank you.